I'm gonna see if, this, if the bees can actually take the top off. What's really weird about starting this video is I'm outside and there is no wind, which is a rare meteorological phenomenon <laughs> where I live. I didn't even have to put a windscreen on my microphone at all. I have three types of windscreen. I have a windscreen that's kind of, you know, low, and then one that's medium, and one that's gigantic that I wear on really windy days. And no windscreen today, but we are gonna do an experiment, and what we're gonna do is something I think might just work. I'm gonna film it, if it doesn't work, I'll just trash the film. But what I'm gonna do, I've put honey mixed with water down in this, uh, in this bottle. And I'm gonna see if, this, if the bees can actually take the top off to get to the honey. Now, this is an experiment that's interesting because right now, this time of the year, there's nothing to forage on. And so if you go outside around my property now and you put one drop of honey, there's a million bees there <laughs> within minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's like crazy. And so I know that I can get the bees here and I'm just wondering if they're able to get the top off. Bees are pretty smart and what's gonna happen maybe is that they'll be able to smell the honey down below that's mixed with water coming out. They have, they're great sniffers, better than dogs. And so once they realize that they need to just kind of chase the smell, then they might just start wiggling this off. Now, these lids are made kind of interesting. They have these little catch grooves. Uh, they're made so that when you're uncapping them, when you're twisting them off for the first time, and the pressure may be intense, they're actually made not to blow off. And so what I'm gonna do is, I don't think it's fair to make the bees unscrew the lid. Come on. That's another day of an experiment when we have more time. But I don't know if they could actually unscrew it. I kind of doubt it. Maybe a little ways. But so I'm going to get it to where it's able to be just lifted off. So once I turn it and I can tell it, it's freely sitting on there like that, but it's not easy to knock it off. It still takes a lot to lift that off. And so I'm going to just put it out there and we'll sit and watch it and see if bees from the hives around my training center here can actually go and lift this lid off. Now, before I do the experiment, I wanna encourage you to remember, hey guys, I'm gonna have all my online classes at 50% off on Black Friday. Last year when we did this, some of you cried and you were like disappointed you didn't hear about me telling you they were coming up and I don't think we gave a lot of notice like we should have maybe. But anyway, this year I'm going out ahead of time, a few weeks ahead of time saying Black Friday classes, 50% off. There's links in the description below. So don't miss out. So many of you have left comments that you're just waiting with your finger on the trigger to purchase those classes on Black Friday. Also check out the book that Sherry and I wrote, Backyard Beekeeping, everything you need to know to start your first hive. Uh, lovely book that we enjoyed writing so much. And if you get this from our website, we'll actually autograph it. We ship out a ton of these every week to you guys. So thank you so much for your business. And what we're gonna do now is take this out to where I have been feeding some bees a few weeks ago. I don't see any bees there right now, but I'm gonna kind of just set it there and uh, I'll, I'll just wait until some bees shows up to start filming it. And then we'll see if honeybees can actually lift this lid off and get down into this honey that's down below. Let's get into it. So I put some honey in a bottle and I wanted to see if the bees could take the top off. And I'm really shocked at what they're doing. They know that the honey is down there and they are trying to get that lid off. They are working that lid off. That is crazy. You gotta watch this all the way through. Look at that, here they go. How do they do that? Look, I'm not doing that. There's no strings attached or anything. How can they do that? How do they know that? Oh my gosh. It's almost off. This is not real, is it? Can this really be happening? 
Will they remove it all the way off? Looks like they're getting around to this side of it pretty good. I know they smell the honey in the bottom. And to get to it, they have to take this top off. Honeybees are brilliant. If you're wondering why they're not, oh, here they go. If you're wondering why they're not stinging me, because they're on a mission to get that top off. They have about got it off. Look at that. These are honeybees. These aren't yellow jackets. These are actual Apis mellifera honeybees. Smart enough to figure out how to get that lid off. But are they strong enough? It's so close. They can smell that honey in the bottom. they want to get down there. I think they're strong enough to do it. I really do. I think they could just start working their head underneath the lid. They've got a big gap on that side over there. I think they could figure that out, just how to get under there and wedge that off. If enough of them did it, they could do this. Don't give up, you can do it. You're on YouTube, come on. So you'll notice as those bees go to their hive, do a waggle dance, bring the more bees back. Oh. We're going to have an army. Look at that. Here it goes. Oh, they did it. Wow. They knocked the top off of it. Dang. They did it. That's insane. Now they're gonna go down in there. Look at that big bumblebee. Yikes. I'm more scared of the bumblebee than I am the honeybees. Ooh, one of them, one of them went down there. It's like, hey. That's where the, that's where the honey is. Well, let's give them a little reward for their effort here. Let's go ahead and just pour it out on this frame. I've kind of diluted it with some water. So it's more like honey water. Oh, there's some rich honey there. Look at that. Good job, girls. Pretty impressive. And the word is out. They made hacks 
process in the bottle. Well, that's just simply amazing, isn't it? That, that bees can just follow the scent of honey and get there. Now, a lot of people uh, have reported, and a lot of you guys have had it happen to you, that when you're drinking your drink like this, you can actually get a bee st sting on your lip or tongue because bees will actually fly down in there. Now, I don't think it's so much, in my experience, honey bees that do that. I think it's yellow jackets more. When I'm drinking pop, I see yellow jackets all around my Coke cans or whatever, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you got to make sure there's not a yellow jacket in there. But in this case, um, if you've got something sweet and the time of the year is just right, look out, honeybees are going to be there. Everybody's going to be there, uh, like that bumblebee. And uh, all these insects, this time of the year in the fall here in Illinois, uh, they're desperate kind of store up resources for winter. So they're looking at the drop of anything to go out there and get it. So uh, be careful if you're out there at parties this time of the year. I mean, gosh, you could even warm up on Thanksgiving Day and you go outside drinking a bottle of pop or something. And if it's warm enough, bees are going to be looking for some sugar and they're going to sniff out that Coke you're drinking and try to get in there. So be careful uh, when you're doing that. Now, can bees still rob out hives this time of the year as we get closer to winter? Yeah, they can on a, on a strong day where it's warm and the bees are looking for stuff. Just like they went after this, they can actually go after another hive. So continue to be careful about that. Now, I promised you guys I was going to open up some of the things you've been sending me. Look at this gigantic box and a nice letter that comes with it. So let's take a look at what this is. It is very interesting. Wow, let's get it out of this box. Hang on. Oh, look at that. What in the world is it? All right, this is interesting. Let's take a look. Oh, it comes with a letter. Look at this. Dear David, I hope this package finds you well and closes my worksheets for your ultimate class for grading. I would like to personally thank you for all your hard work, knowledge, and teaching abilities that you have graciously shared with myself and others. Also, a gift is enclosed that I ask you to accept as a token of my appreciation from my wife and myself. Thank you, Andrew and Angie. Wow, thank you guys. That is such a nice gift. And I appreciate your kind words. That uh, means a lot to me. What in the world is it? Let's take a look at this. Okay, so looks like I open it like this. So all right, let's look at this beautiful carving in the front. Look at that. Golly, that is beautiful. I still wonder what it is. It looks like to me it has a vent in the back and it has frame rest. It looks like a five frame nook box. Definitely five frame nook box. But what's neat about it is that you can lock it down. It's got a chain. It's got a chain over here. And that little board there, I... Um, well, thank you guys. I think it's really cool. I think that might be where you put your hive tool. Um, I'm going to probably need some ideas about what this chain is for in the front, other than just picking it up and carrying it long ways once you kind of you can have two different ways to hold it. Look at this. So that's a vent. So here's the entrance right here. And this entrance actually has different settings. Look at that. Wow. Here is if you want to hold your queen in, but the workers to fly out. And this is just roll it here for the vent. And here is full in and out of everybody. That's really cool. I like those little entrances like that. That's a lot of fun. All right. Well, that's really great. Andrew and Angie, I, I really appreciate this. Wow. I'm going to treasure that. It's really kind of you to send me this. Okay, here's another box. And I've had this for quite some time, but I have been so busy filming and I had such a schedule that I didn't have a way to work it into my videos until today. So let's take a look. This is from a B Team 6 member, Michael. Michael lives in Kansas. Let's see what Michael sent me today. Thanks, Michael, for thinking about me. Oh boy, there's, I don't know what's going on here. Oh boy, look at this. Oh, that looks like parts to some sort of a scale. I never want to throw anything away that is left in the box accidentally. Being careful here. Ah, instructions. Get my readers out. David and Sherry. 
I saw on one of your coffee time videos that you like to receive things from all over to display in your backdrop. Yeah, back here. And I thought you might like these. Sincerely, Michael. Thank you both for the education I'm receiving. I want to become certified for my third career. Uh, carpenter, chef, certified beekeeper. Woo! <laughs> All right, Michael, that's pretty cool. Uh, ambitions, I, I think that's great. Oh, these are, this looks like a sack. Maybe that's just a shipping protector. <laughs> Look at me just looking through everything. I'm like a kid at Christmas. All right, that's shipping material. Oh, so here it is. Look at that. It is a very old antique scale. Look at that. Get my eyes out of the camera, so maybe to show you what this looks like. Isn't that awesome? So, look at that. I guess you would put your the fish that you caught, or test your beehive if you want to see how heavy your beehive is, and you can pull like that, and, and it gives you how much it weighs. That's really good. I can tell that. I use scales in another activity that I'm involved in to test different spring tensions. And uh, I might even use that for this. Look at that, that's pretty cool. Hey, Michael, thank you. And I know you sent me another box too. I gotta open that up. Oh wait, there's something else. I forgot, there's this round thing here. Is that a mosquito? Oh, it sounds like a bell. Good old knife, that's a hinder knife from Ohio. It is a bell, look at that, oh my gosh. It is an old time bell. Gosh, like you would see at a bank, you know, when you go up to the, the teller and she's not there and you're like. I'm the guy when I was a kid and I saw one of those, guess what I did? David, stop that. My mom would be like, quit, get away from the bell, quit ringing the bell. I love to ring a bell. Oh, thanks, Mike. That's that's really cool, buddy. I, I think that's great. That is amazing. All right, so Michael actually sent two boxes. Let's take a look at this one. I know it's getting dark. Got to hustle. Got to hurry. Mm. All right, let's take a look. This is a lightweight box. It's not very heavy, so maybe it'd be interesting to see what Mike has sent us. When people go by Michael, I never know if you should call him Michael or Mike. Some people ask me, do you go by David or you go by David? I mean, do you go by David or do you go by Dave? I go by David. All right, a lot of good shipping package here. Must be glass. It's really packed well. This, I think, was all that was in this gigantic box. Now it's another box we gotta go through. <laughs> Are you playing with me, Michael? <laughs> Is it gonna be another little box inside of this one? Hmm. Oh, look at that. Yep. Wow. All right, we're going at it here. What do we got? I really appreciate you guys sending me things like this. I do enjoy it. I'm not, uh, I'm humbled by it that you would think enough of me to send me some sort of a gift or something. I'm like a little kid at Christmas if you send me something. That's noisy, sorry. I can't get to it, it's impossible. I know something's in there. Michael, if you have three careers, one of your careers should be expert packager. <laughs> you had to have been a packaging person. You packed this so well. Wow, we're getting down. Wow. I mean, this is really interesting. It is like such a small thing for such a big box. <gasps> oh. I know why you packed it so well. Ay, 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 Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Dang. Wow, look at that. It's glass. And it didn't break. And it's a bird. That it's beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Good job on packaging. And thank you, Michael, for that gift. That is just amazing. 
That must be a bird that I don't know off the top of my head, but that is beautiful. Wow. All right, guys. Well, there you go. If any of you want to send me a gift and watch me open it, and uh, I appreciate any gifts you want to send me, and I will get to opening them and uh, admiring it. So that's going to be, I'm going to put that on my inside studio, and that'd be on the shelf, Michael. And I want to thank you for sending that to me. I've got some videos that I've made last week that are real important. I said in one of my videos, I said, don't forget this one thing. Oh my gosh, don't forget it. And I made a video about it. I want you to look at this video right here. This you cannot forget. I'll see you over there, guys.